That's great. Thank you very Good. much. Roy Hodgson, as always, a pleasure to speak to you, sir. Um, I'm going to jump straight in. You're back in management, of course, and it felt like the godfather. Al Pacino's character, once I was out, they pulled me back in. I mean, were you actively pining to get back into management? No, I can't say honestly that I was. The, the offer to come here came really out of the blue and took me very much by surprise. It wasn't something that I was actually seeking as such. But of course, I was pleased to receive the offer and pleased to get the chance to try and help Watford out of the situation that they found themselves in, and I'm still enjoying that challenge, albeit that we as yet haven't really succeeded in taking ourselves as far away from the relegation zone as we all would have liked. Roy, what were you up to in your, in your little sabbatical off in that case, between clubs? Well, of course, we could travel. I mean, and the, the, you know, it was nice, our son lives abroad, it was nice to spend some time, time with him in, in Mallorca, where he lives, so... Uh, basically, the time was spent when not there. It, it was spent really looking after ourselves, you know, walking, reading, just enjoying life, having some nice lunches and some nice dinners and just enjoying the fact really that one had plenty of freedom without any responsibilities weighing one down. Mm, very true. Um... What about the Watford situation? I mean, when, when you were first offered the job, had you been watching the Premier League religiously in your time off? Did you come in knowing what to expect from the team and your assessment of the squad? No. I mean, I'd seen Watford on the on occasions when their matches were on TV, but that probably wasn't as many times in terms of being able to watch them as I would have watched Manchester City, Liverpool and Chelsea, for example, you know, who feature on the TV channels much more regularly. Uh, and I was following the Premier League, of course, like any other football fan, but uh, I don't know if, if the word religiously would be valid or even avidly. I was enjoying matches when, when they were put before me, but if there was something else I was doing, I wasn't necessarily regretting the fact that I wasn't sat in front of a TV screen. You have such a vast amount of experience. You've seen so many squads... How do, you, how do you view the Watford squad itself? Do you feel that perhaps there's too much quality there to be battling relegation, quality and experience? I mean, someone like Ben Foster, he's been around for years as a star. Yeah, we've got a number of, of players that you could regard as experience. It, it's, a, it's, it's pretty much balanced between players who are playing either their first year in, in the Premiership, or their, in some cases their first matches in, in the Premiership, and others who've been here for a, a period of time and of course should have built up uh, experience and knowledge of what the league demands. I think it's dangerous to start talking about having too much talent and too much of this and too much of that, because if we really had those qualities we wouldn't be where we are today. We've got to hope that the players are able to show a little bit more than they've perhaps been able to do up to now um, because we still have seven matches left and that's a lot of points to play for. And I've been very satisfied with the way the players have worked and tried to take on board, if you like, the, the type of things that Ray Lewington and myself have been saying to them in terms of trying to make them a stronger team unit and give ourselves a, a better chance of competing for the points that are on offer. Um, but the, the level of skill and ability, that's something the players are going to have to work hard to bring to each game, alongside, of course, a, a not inconsiderable amount of energy and desire. What about Emmanuel Dennis, though? Because he's one individual, one player that really stood out for me. I was watching a Champions League encounter, one of his former clubs, Club Bruges, and uh, he, he performed exceptionally well against a team like Real Madrid. I mean, does he stand out for you in your assessment? Well, he hasn't done so far. He hasn't. He wasn't. Hasn't played all of the games. Um, he 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 was uh, suspended when we got here. Uh, then, of course, he's been on international duty. So I think of the ten games or so I've had, he hasn't really featured in more than maybe six of them. Um, and as yet, you know, we haven't seen. The best of him, you know, it's nice to know that you've, you have seen the best of him and 
perhaps we've still got that to come because we, we're certainly going to need it. But I can't honestly say that in the 10 matches I've had that he's played a, a decisive part in the matches because he's only scored one goal for a start and hasn't necessarily got any assist to his name either. When it comes to, you're speaking about the amount of games that you, you've covered so far, managed Watford. How long does it take a manager, do you feel, or just yourself, to get your ideas across, to, to get your system and philosophy in place? It doesn't need to take a lot of time. I mean, I think the players here have actually embraced that quite well. Um, and any lack of success isn't down to the fact that the players haven't embraced the ideology or, or, or bought in either to really the, the thoughts that, yeah, if we can do this, this will make us better and stronger. They, they have bought in and they have actually on many occasions shown they, they can do it very well because some of the results we've had have actually been very good ones in, in, in difficult situations. But of course, we've now got to get even more consistency in that degree of performance. And in particular, of course, we've got to deal with the anomaly that our best performances so far have been away from home and the ones at home have been slightly less good. Um, we've not been lucky at home, so it's not quite simply that we, you know, good away, bad home. That would be, that would be too animal farmish, really. It's not quite as brutal as that. But there's no doubt that at the moment our home form and our inability to win matches at home is what's really hurting us. And we've got four of the last seven matches at home and they're against rivals who, like ourselves, are at the wrong end of the table. So we, we've really got to, in some way or other to take advantage of that. And I hope that, you know, Dennis, that you say you've seen play very well and score goals against even teams of Real Madrid's quality, that he and a guy like Ismail Assar, another player who's very, very highly rated, they're going to really step up to the plate and win the matches for us. It's interesting you bring up that home form versus away form because that, that was almost a trait during the uh, empty stadium period of previous years because of the pandemic. And it, it seems to have still happened now, even though the crowds are back at all of the stadiums. Why do you think that is the case that Watford haven't won since what the Manchester United victory? No, well, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's not because... In any way, at least I can only speak for the time that I've been at the club. We don't we don't adopt a different approach to how we want to play home or away. Our, our approach is always based on our principles that we try to work on, and of course we 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 tamper with them to some extent regarding the the opponents who are coming in, in terms of our preparation. But basically, the principles are there. They're very strong. Our, our core principles defending and attacking, what we want to see from the players. And, you know, the players have, I think, probably been trying to carry that out. So why that should mean that when you're away from home, the result goes your way, but at home it doesn't. And, of course, the worst thing, I think, about our home results has been the score lines, Because we lost 4-1 at Crystal Palace with two goals in the last five minutes in a game where we were playing very evenly with them throughout. And we lost 3-0 now recently to, to uh, Leeds in a game where you could even argue that we had the better of the game. Uh, so that's the, that's, the, that's the saddest part at the moment, that we don't just lose, we lose by a lot of goals in, in games where really the play from penalty box to penalty box is very even. Perfect. Roy, we all saw that video of you in training. Maybe you can sub yourself on in the last minute. One of these days, put in a free kick or a cross because that was sublime. Wishing you the best of luck for the rest of the season, sir. Thank you, Adam. Thanks.